Well, thank you so much. Joining me now is Dr. Daryl Groman, and Dr. Groman is um, with Groman Vision out of Pandora, and he has recently um, been told that um, he has received a tremendous recognition from The Ohio State University, and uh, we want to welcome you to the show and also offer our congratulations. You are one of the top 100 notable alumni in the OSU College of Optometry. Quite an honor. Uh, to God be the glory. It's not for my own personal recognition, but an opportunity that I'm being recognized yeah. uh, for helping people to see a lot better. Exactly. One at a time for um, ne next year will be 30 years of, of private practice. Good for you. Well, you are doing his work in helping us be able to see. And um, it is quite a gift that you have. And so let's talk about... Um, your honor, I know that you were surprised by it, weren't you? I was completely surprised. I read over the email a number of times before <laughs> it made any sense to me, and I called up the college. But part of the recognition is because in 1987, I helped start up the Ohio chapter of the Volunteer Optometric Services to Humanity, VOSH Ohio, uh, where we collect used eyeglasses, and we have a sorting center in Pandora we're in the church basement. Glasses are used eyeglasses that have been donated by Lions Clubs and optometrists and ophthalmologists and church groups and anywhere you might see eyeglasses are collected. Yeah. Most end up in Pandora in the basement of the United Methodist Church and without fanfare, over two million glasses have been sorted since 1988 and we've sent out 42 missions and I've been on 12. Wow and to help people to see better in, in different places around the world, in Latin America and Africa and uh, India and Eastern Europe. Yeah. Um, it's been an awesome opportunity to help people see better. Well, we're gonna bring you on um, later to talk about, to talk more about that ministry, but I guess I kind of want to take you back when um, you were a child um, and how you got into optometry. What, what was your calling to this field? Um, a significant factor in my life was I was very nearsighted growing up in school and wearing glasses all the time and I found an awesome change happened in my life when I started to wear contact lenses mm -hmm. uh, going from lenses that for somebody who's nearsighted when you look through a nearsighted lens the world looks smaller and clearer and smaller but to wear contact lenses opened up the uh, peripheral vision and and I found that that was, um, pun intended, an eye-opening experience. <laughs> Definitely. And, you know, there are so many children who do wear glasses, need to wear glasses. Um, and so, but it takes, it takes smarts and science, takes a lot of, um, you know, hard work and math, too, I'm sure. So what made you choose Ohio State? Ohio State uh, College of Optometry is the only optometry college in, o in Ohio, mm -hmm. and so that limits. Kind of li okay, but you're uh, a big Buckeye fan. I'm uh, hoping. Go Bucks! Okay, of course. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, so the, the restroom in the office has the Ohio State um, logos, and I'm probably yes. offending the Michigan. Well, that's okay. Fans, we feel sorry for I them. Hope that I, I hope they'll come back to the office. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, your job must be so gratifying, though, because as you have your own personal testimony about your vision, um, you know, your, your vision, and I can say this because um, I am legally blind without my contacts and, and glasses, I so um, treasure and value my, my eyesight. And um, without it, I know that my life would go on, but it would be different. Vision is a key factor that's not well understood even in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. um, we're shown uh, the model of the human eye uh, from fifth grade through professional schools in any area of interest with the developing human being. But what's usually missing from that picture of the solitary eye that shows the structures, the cornea, back to the retina and all the parts is what's rarely shown as the second eye, the second eyeball. Okay. Because what's typically not thought is that the two eyes don't typically work together in tandem. 
Oh. And there are a lot of individuals who may have 20-20 acuity, but they're not using their vision to their maximum uh, potential. Uh, an archaeologist might say, if you don't look for it, you're not going to find it. And uh, one easy task that you can do, because I have a special interest with kids who do struggle in the classroom, mm -hmm. that's a, a big area of special interest, that oftentimes near vision is not looked at. And so what you could do at home is to take a pencil or a pen, or I might use a, a target, to slide it like a slide trombone on eye level, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm wiggling my That's hands. Okay. But, but if you bring a target close and you look to see where the two eyes are going, the two eyes are not necessarily looking at the same place. That's called a convergence, and pursuit is a task of tracking or following, and one needs to make a precise movement from one target to the other. And so when you read text, you have to start at the top of the page and go down and also go from left to right mm -hmm. in a self-directed uh, eye movements. And that's not always looked for. Interesting. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we are going to bring Dr. Groman back um, later on and we're going to talk more about his um, ministry, and I can call it that, with uh, children as um, he practices optometry in the village of Pandora. So we're going to turn it back to you and we'll be back with Dr. Groman later on.